My name is Autame Samari. I'm a lawyer and I practice law in Kaduna here. I'm also a politician, contested election in the 2015 uh, general elections for member house of representatives. Um, there is trouble in my area, my chiefdom, which is called Kaniko chiefdom. In my district, which is Goska district, in villages under the Goska district, and that is uh, Misisi, Pasakori, and Mailuan. They are all within Gidanwaya area. What happened was that sometimes in October, early October, to be precise, between first and uh, 10th of October, some persons invaded our settlements, armed, and they came in, attacked people in Mississi, Mailuan, and Pasapore area. They killed the village head of Mississi and nine other people. The some people who were dressed in army uniforms came into the area and lured the village head into, his name is John Zogo, lured him and some persons into his house in the name of, they were going to settle the, uh, or to, to find peace. Was it after the killing, the initial killing? Yes, after the initial killing. Already people were displaced. So, and they, they came in, invited the, the village head and some other persons. They were dressed in military uniform and said, let us see how we can find lasting peace. Took them into the, the village head's house and there they opened fire on them. Killed the village head and killed nine other people. Just simultaneously, attackers, invaders came from behind the village and raised it down. They burnt down the entire village. Now, a few days after, the village head of Mailuan was, we went out of his house, came back and found that about three rifles were found from persons that, you know, fled the, the fighting by the main road leading into Kidamwe, took the rifles to the man's house. And when the man came, saw them, and observed that they were police rifles, and as a law-abiding citizen, decided, nobody compelled him, decided to take these rifles to the police as a law-abiding citizen. The police at where? At Kapancha. Okay. As soon as they got hold of these uh, rifles from him, they arrested him and detained him on the 26th day of October. He is still being detained till this moment as I'm talking to you. At where? In the state CID here in Kaduna. Okay. What's so, so it's saying it's offense? They, at the time they arrested him, they said that the, the three rifles that were found that he brought to them belonged to serving policemen whom, according to them, are missing. So they are now saying it is either he produced those who brought the rifles to him or that they would deem that he was the one that, you know, arrested and killed these people. I mean, he, that he is the one that, that got these people disappeared. So when he said, look, at the time they brought these rifles to me, I was not there. They just brought this. When I came back to the house, I discovered the rifles were brought to my house. Were the policemen killed or? We don't. You? Nobody knows. Even the, the police authorities today, if you ask them, they will say, all they say is that they are missing. So, and when they were arresting the village head, they, it did not, you know, occur to them that at least by way of courtesy, they needed to inform his district head by saying um, we are taking 
sorry, the name of the village head is Luca Garba. Luca. Luca Garba. Okay. Now they didn't find it uh, uh, important to inform his district head. That's the district head of Gosta, who is by name Moses Birthday. So they took him from his from his house to Kapanchan Division, and from Kapanchan they brought him to state CID here in Kaduna. So after some days, in fact after about a week or so, the district head felt the need to go and plead with the police authorities, particularly the commissioner of police, if the commissioner would release this man to him, his own district, uh, village head to him, so that they would go and see if they would uh, source for or look for those that did this thing, if possible. On the day the village, the district head came to solicit for the release of the village head on, on bail, he too was arrested and detained on the second day of November 2016. As I'm talking with you today, 27th day of November 2016, both the village head and the district head are in police detention. Now, the problem that has occurred is that we applied, I, as their counsel, as their lawyer, applied, first of all, we went to the police and asked if they would release them on administrative bail, since one, they are traditional rulers, two, they are complaining of ill health. We, we said, if it is going to be possible to release these people to us on administrative bail, pending when they will conclude the investigation, they refused. In fact, they threatened that they were going to arrest other village heads and district heads in the area. So when we saw this, we decided to file an action for the enforcement of their fundamental rights at the Federal High Court in Kaduna here. The matter was assigned to the judge of High, Federal High Court number two. And there is a provision in the fundamental rights rules that said even before you serve the fundamental rights uh, application on the respondent, you will, you can apply for the bail of the persons, the person or persons that have been detained, and we did that. On the day we went to apply or to move to our expatriate application for the release of these two guys or three guys rather in detention, the judge said because of the personalities involved, because Mr. President is one of the respondents, the federal government of Nigeria, the governor of Kaduna State, and Inspector General of Police and the Commissioner of Police Kaduna State are, were made respondents. Instead of the judge to hear our application based on the fundamental rights enforcement procedure rules, he chickened out and said, that they have been warned, that is, their judges have been warned not to grant ex parte application. I said, no, this is, an, this is a special application. It's, a, it's an exceptional one. And so, we urge you to hear us. He said, no, we must put the other side on notice. I said, thank God, on the day we filed the application, we made arrangement and the respondents have been served. So, if you insist that you will not hear us ex parte. Then we urge you to, to fix the application on Monday, the, because it was on Thursday. Fix it on, mon on Monday, which would have been one whole week or seven days as provided by the rules. He said no. Instead, what he did was to adjourn the case sine die. Adjourning a case sine die in law means adjourning it without a date. I say you are not being fair to us. What has happened to that community during these times? Now, well, after, after all done, we had to withdraw that case, brought it back to the state uh, high court. On the day, the, state, the judge of the state high court, Justice Mohammed Bello, granted them bail. The, the police quickly filed a charge, uh, I mean, uh, 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 and a first information report in the chief magistrate court alleging that the, 
uh, the offenses of kidnap and terrorism, and so made the case of these two gentlemen a little bit difficult. Now, while these people are here for for committing no no, no crime at all, the other villages that were not attacked hitherto on Thursday and Friday this past week, the entire village was or villages have been raised down by rampaging armed carrying persons whom we don't know. How 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 many villages what's the name of the villages? The villages are Mailwan and uh, Pasakori. Okay. They have persons dressed in military uniform over a hundred. They came in overwhelmed the few policemen and soldiers that were posted in that place and got the entire villages burnt down. How many people were killed? The figure, the casualty figure now is not yet ascertained because the, the number of the deaths keep increasing every day. How much many? Just give a figure approximately. For now, for now we have a figure of about 50 people dead. Okay. But the, that, is, that is on the conservative side, but okay. the figure is much more. Now, what, why we are so worried is because it appears, it looks as if there is no security in, in this state or in the area. These people are having field day. They kill, maim, destroy property, destroy food, destroy homes at will. And why it is so worrisome is because these things are happening on daily basis. Now, why should the government of Nigeria concentrate its security men in the northeast and in the Niger Delta and live in the real theaters of war where defenseless Nigerians are being killed, maimed, and their properties destroyed at will? Don't forget that the, 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 the senseless killing by these persons that only God knows who they are started since August 2016 in Godogodo, moving to Ninte and other places. And now, in fact, it went to Chawe in the past week, and now it has come back again to Jema local government. So, the, and Worse of it, the seeming conspiracy of silence on the part of both federal and the Kaduna state government. They don't deploy sufficient security men to man these areas and to ensure and safeguard the, 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 the lives and, uh, of, of the people of the area. This is our area of concern. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir.